Amen. Well, it's good to see everybody. You've been prayed for. We are going to jump in. We are so glad that you guys made it out and came on by. And for those that are listening, thank you so much for tuning in and pass on the message. So today we're going to be talking about the God story. Does that sound like a good story? Oh, it's the best story. It's the best story in all the times. And we're going to hit a little bit on that. But, you know, a lot of times at Christmas time, I kind of really... I won't say struggle, but I want to get my mind around what I want to preach each and every week. In Christmas, you could just say, well, we're going to talk about the birth of Christ and all that. And man, that's amazing. That's miraculous. I'm going to tell you just how miraculous it is in a minute. But I I know that sometimes there are people that just listen on Christmas and Easter and sometimes people that just come on Christmas and Easter and they hear the story about the birth of Christ. How many know that's amazing? But there's so much more. So I want to try to hit that and unpack the so much more today. So I'm just happy that everybody's here, and we're going to be sharing a little bit about that. Everybody said they got all their gifts wrapped and everything, and their hearts are ready to roll. We even got a gift from Miss Marie. She got this beautiful nativity scene. So thank you so much. That's good. And we're just, we're just coming into the holiday season with open hearts. How many people are ready for God to do a work in their life? Amen. That's good. How many people are going to let that carry on over till next year? Good, absolutely. So just with a little opener, I just want to talk about that and just kind of share a few things. And so I know people will be listening all over the world, ducking into churches each and everywhere, and going to hear the message of Jesus Christ. And I pray that they hear it more than with their ears, but they hear it with their heart. Amen. I pray that they open up and receive that. You know, if I got you a gift and brought it to you, and you just set it under your chair or put it under your, your desk and never opened it, it wouldn't do you much good, would it? Many people will hear the, the, the good news of Jesus Christ and do that same thing. They'll hear about it and never unwrap it by faith. So, friends, I pray that we unwrap every good gift that is from God today. Amen? So I'm going to start out with Luke. If you've got your Bibles, we're going to be jumping around. I've got most of the stuff on the wall today. But if not, always bring your Bible because God might want to whisper something to you. Amen? So we're here to celebrate the birth of Christ. And it's starting in Luke 10, 2.10, excuse me. And it says... The angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. How many know the birth of Christ is good news? I mean, it's good news. It just starts opening up right here to us of what God is doing for us. Now, he's been in control from the very beginning, but we get to see God on the scene in flesh. That's exciting right there. I mean, that's just just what it's all about. And so with that, I want to give us a little backstory on some of that. Does that sound good? I want to hit us today with six Bible prophecies that relate to the birth of Christ. All right, everybody good? So we're going to get a little little study in. I always like to call it a preaching and a teaching. So let's take a look at some of this here. So I hope you guys can see that. One of the things we see in Micah 5, 2 is that he would be born in Bethlehem. Out of all the places in the world, God chose Bethlehem. And not only that, God had foretold that in his word early on in Micah 5, 2. How about that? He was going to be born of a virgin, Isaiah 7, 14. He would come from the line of Abraham. And the reason I want you to hear this, facts and details and all these things from God's word, you're going to see how on time God is, amen? He is always on time. He knew who was going to be here. He knew you were going to be here. You might not have known you were going to be here today, but God did. And this message is for each and every one of us. What else do we got here? We just start seeing in Numbers that he said that he would be a descendant of Jacob. And he comes on down here. He was called out of Egypt. The Old Testament foretells Jesus being called out of Egypt and Hosea 11, 1. And here we go. He would be born among sorrows. How many know Jesus might not have had the easiest life, amen? Have you ever been somewhere and then you went somewhere else and you said, man, I wish I was home? I bet he was thinking that. But you know what kept him here? You and me. See, that's the thing we don't realize so many times. Do you really know how much God loves you? You know, sometimes when things are going good, we say, Woo, man, I'm blessed. God loves me. What about when things are tough? You know, really, as time goes by and we dig in deeper with the Lord, we find out even more so then. And I I hate that we go through those things, but the truth is we do go through those things. The good news is we don't go through them alone when we know Jesus Christ. Amen. So we need to know the way. And I'm going to jump on in. That was just a little intro. I'm going to talk about this for our first point. Know the way. And I read a little story the other day, and I thought it was neat, so I'm going to try to read it and not mess it up here. It was about Albert Einstein. Anybody ever heard of him? Kind of good, kind of good guy, smart guy, supposedly, right? Probably went to kick a tan. Yeah, everybody in Buckers said, no, I don't think he went there. No. But anyway, 
So there was a story about old Dr. Einstein, and he went to go for a speaking engagement, and he got on a train, that's what the story says. And as they were moving along, the conductor comes by and says, hey, Dr. Einstein, how you doing? And, he, and he's so busy about what he's doing and his work and what's going on that he could not find his ticket. Y'all ever get busy and lose something? That's happening a lot at my house. I try to blame everybody, but, but it's coming back on me. I'm going to tell you what. I don't know how I got blamed for losing my wife's key. I don't even drive her stuff, man. That's her thing. But guess what? I probably did it. So anyway, this is what's going on here. He's trying to do, I slipped that in right there. Y'all pray for me, okay? <laughs> she said, you got to find them keys. I was like, I don't know where they're at. Prayer time. So let's go back to this. So Einstein gets busy just like all of us, and he's, he's in the front of this uh, uh, train, and he's going by, and the conductor says, hey, look, I know who you are. Don't worry about it. I know you paid for the ticket. So the conductor walks out, and he looks, and Einstein's down on his hands and knees looking at everything, and he goes back. Hey, man, I know who you are. I, I know you paid for the ticket. And I says, says, I know who I am too, but I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> Ain't that something? I thought, wow, one of the, the greatest minds ever. But he was so involved with good stuff that sometimes we miss the God stuff. That's what I'm saying out of that, what, what we can learn out of that. How, how is it we're so busy? The man, You know, I'm so busy, and once all these projects get done, I'm going to get back into church. Well, guess what? First of the year, everybody, you can come on down, Right? Because we always got it, man, first of the year. How many people going to lose weight the first of the year? <laughs> All right. I ain't even going to start. I'm, somebody said January is good, but April sounds better. <laughs> I mean, how many, we're going to save some more money the first of the year. What's different? We, we, we set the thing in stone. So I pray this. And this is something I offer every year, and I'll talk about it next week. If anybody wants to go deeper in the Word of God, let me know. And we'll put a plan together and we'll do that. But utilize what we already have in place. Bible study and different things like that. The apps on the phone. I want to see us grow into everything that God has gifted us with. Amen. That's what I want us to see. But so with all that being said, like I said, he knew who he was, but he just didn't know where he's going. You said, well, how does that tie in? There's a lot of Christians who know who they are. They put their faith and trust in the Lord, but they don't know where they're going. And I don't mean like their spiritual destination. They, know, they don't know what's going on each and every day. They're, they're so wrapped up in the world, come on, that we miss what God's teaching us and showing us each and every day. Somebody say amen if you believe that. And I know it because we can get so geared up. So I want to try to help us get our moral compass back on with a little bit of scripture. How about that? That's always a good thing. John 14, 6, Jesus told him and said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It is always about Jesus, not just on his birthday. Amen. What do we do with the other 364 days a year? Are you living for the Lord? Are you, are you reflecting him well? I pray that this message, God, take it and just prick the hearts of your children to grow in you. So we see that many times it's just been a big stumbling block. We go, well, I'm, I, I need to do this. I can do it myself. How many people like doing it themselves? My way. I'm going to do it. You know, we do. But guess what you could not do? You couldn't save yourself. You can't save yourself. You can't be smart enough. Guess you figured that out already with me, right? Can't be good looking enough. Can't, can't give enough. It's all about Jesus Christ and the finished work of the cross. But guess what? He had to start somewhere. He had to come. He had to be born, right? And born of a virgin. Here we go. Because he had a sinless life. Let's take a look at this. Luke 2, 11. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. You know, God always tells his people what he's about to do, doesn't he? We say, oh, God moves in some mysterious ways, boy, I tell you. But if you read his word, you'll start knowing the things when they unfold, amen. We'll start seeing God will whisper and we'll lean into those different promptings in our spirit so that we can move with the flow of God. And so, you know, as we look at this today, this is my question. I want you guys to think about this. How does the birth of Christ shape your life? That's my whole thing. How does it shape your life? What difference does it make to you? Is it just another day you got to stand in line, long lines, and, and, and get the wrong size pantyhose for your grandma? Or is it what? First thing that popped in my mind, I'm sorry. I don't even know if my grandma had pantyhose. I don't know. I did not buy her any pantyhose. But anyway, woo, reel it back in. But you know, you see, see how we get sidetracked on that? We get focused on the gift. We get focused on these things and all that. Instead of, you guys, I've ruined you guys, haven't I? <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. Everybody's going, man, I didn't get grandma no pantyhose. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
Let's try to recover from that. But, you know, we do have a good time. And, you know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So I'm feeling pretty strong right now. <laughs> but we get wrapped around the wheel of what we got to get, how we got to do it, and everything else. And so today I hope that you understand that the greatest gift that was ever given was that of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the gift right there. And it changed everything. I wrote that the other day. Jesus changed everything. We are no longer in a route to hell if we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Amen? So we can know where we're going. We can know who we are because of the Savior of the world. And so I want to talk to you a little bit more about that question I had. How will you allow Christmas, Christmas, the birth of Jesus, to shape your life? So one of the things I wrote in here, a little Buck Road translation, I said, do you allow God to charter your heart? Use your life. You think about a bus, you know, you charter it. This is where we're going. Do we allow God to charter our heart and direct our steps? Do we allow God to, to get first place in our life? Hey, look, I'm preaching to me first. I know that we need to make course corrections daily, sometimes hourly, sometimes momently. But aren't you glad that we serve a God that is so good and loves us so much and so full of grace, right, that he allows U-turns. He allows us to get back on path. Amen? Anybody ever took a detour? I'm going to pray for y'all. didn't see one hand raised. Right now, Lord, help everybody that's listening, right? I'm going to raise two hands and a foot. Man, we get detoured sometimes, don't we? I mean, because you know what? We like what's shiny and new, don't we? Woo, that's shiny and new. We like, we like the shortcuts, right? But what I find is shortcuts in life also brings out a lot of times shortcomings in our life. I always think about, when I talk about that, I think about the life of David. You know, here they tell him when he's 13, 15 years old, so you're going to be the king. And it didn't happen for years and years and years later. But God used those times to form in that man's life some God-sized attributes. And not only that, we see that even in the midst of that, the man after God's own heart, right, still blew it some. In other words, we need Jesus. So I pray that we open the gift of Christ today. So many things. Are we allow him? to direct our step, to set our pace. And here's the thing. Are you allowing God to reveal his story through your life? Everybody's got a testimony. Everybody's got a story. And you know what? You say, well, you know, I, I hadn't been through this, so I can't really speak on Just tell folks what God has done in your life. Well, I don't know all the scriptures. I don't... Just tell folks what God has done in your life. And I tell you what, the chances are they probably remember that more than something I get into real deep. They'll say, you know, uh, you know, Joe, uh, God, God, he was here and God moved him to here. You know, Sally had this going on in life and God worked in that. Every person in here, every person listening has a testimony. Man, share that and give God the glory. That's the God story. What I want to see today is how does the God story intercede with your story? Did it change your life when you understood the meaning of Christmas? I mean, think about it. I know for me, for a long time, I mean, you know, it, it's a long time in between, you know, year to year. Have you ever got promised you're going to get something next year on Christmas, the day after Christmas? Like, you get a bicycle next year. <laughs> I'm 27. I wanted one when I was five, you know, whatever. You know, sometimes it, seems, it might as well be that far out. I want to tell you about the gift that God gives. You can open it today by faith. You can open everything that God has for you today by putting your faith and trust in the finished work of the cross. You can grab hold of that today. But see, once you get it, you don't just unbox it and put it back under your bed, right? Share it, shine it, pass it on. I love sharing Jesus. Have y'all noticed that? It don't make any difference. Doesn't make it wherever we're at. Man, I want to give that gift, not just on Christmas, right? Not just on Thanksgiving, but every single day that we can, because you know what? We never know when we're leaving here. We never know. I say this many times. The last figure I look, 150,000 people die a day. 150,000 people die a day. If you break that down, you'd have to get the calculator out. I wonder how many that is an hour, a minute, a lot. And many of those folks are leaving here not knowing Christ. But we can be different makers by sharing his word. And you guys do a great job of that. So I want to commend you on that. But I also want to encourage you to keep on going. So we know the way is Jesus Christ. There's one way to heaven. One way to heaven. And it's through a personal relationship 
with Christ. I want you to hear that today. That's the gift that needs to be open. But how many people would love to know the will of the Father? Both of you. Anybody else? How about that? Don't you want to know what God has planned for your life? I know you do. You guys are a little shy today. You don't need to be shy up in here, man. So I'm going to give you five keys that I believe that will help us know the will of God for our life, right? So if you've got your notepad, write some of these down. We're going to roll through them, all right? And this is what I see here. The will of God, I want you to hear this. The will of God is always more important than the opinions of man. Somebody say amen right there. If you listen to everything everybody else tells you, you'll really, rarely do what God has chosen you to do. I remember when I first got into ministry, I had a, a friend of mine. And he said, man, that's really cool. That's good. But I knew, I didn't know all the picture. Do we ever? God, when, we, when he speaks into our heart and we take a step, he'll tell us. And then we step out and he'll tell us. He leads us a little bit at a time. How many are glad that he didn't tell you the whole picture because you'd just be overwhelmed? I would be overwhelmed if he told me where he was going to carry us, and he's still working. But I'm still seeking him in those things. And I remember one of my buddies, and, and, and the guy was a great guy, but sometimes we just talk out of turn, don't we? Bloop. Does that ever happen to anybody other than your pastor? You're still thinking about Granny's painting hose, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I ruined it. I should have went back there. But he's just talking out of turn. And uh, so as the ministry was unfolding, you know, he said, well, you, you're, the, you're the guitar guy. You're the guitar guy. In other words, we're just going to put you in that little spot right there so you do guitar and you shut up and that's what you're supposed to do. And guess what? I was thinking, that sounds good to me because I played because I was comfortable with that. I wasn't comfortable about talking in front of people so much, but God used different things through my rock and roll career to bring that out a little bit more. You know, God will take where you are and what he's already built into you. And as we set the course and he charters our heart, he will start molding those things in. Bring people alongside and do different things like that to show you the way. And I'm going to get to that first thing right here. You will start to see confirmation for those who walk with God. Those that are walking with God, they'll say, you know what? They will see the hand of God in your life. I'm going to reel back and I'm just going to share about my life a little bit. I know you guys got some uh, stories just much more amazing than that. I remember when I first started playing guitar in church, I was terrified. Jumped off every pool table up and down Mercury Boulevard, played guitar behind my neck, didn't matter. I was ready to go. It was good. But man, we're in God's house. I had a reverence for that. I'm like, man, I don't want to mess up. Lord, please don't let me say tip your waitress and bartenders. I got all these old, I got all these old, see the old man still, still running around in there, you know? You ought to take a journey in this little bean right here. Y'all guys say, woo, where's he at? But so all these different things are going on in my mind. All these things are going on in my mind. And you know, because a lot of times when I'm over here, the guitar's breaking, I'm doing, I just got to turn this knob all of a sudden. And God says, I got it. Don't worry about it. Anybody get worked up and overwhelmed just a little bit? A little bit more? A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. We can. This time of year, we can get worked up. I mean, too much gravy on the mashed potatoes could send somebody over the top, man. It, but it, it, that's not it. It's just too I can't believe it. They were supposed to be here at two. You know, they were supposed to be here. Well, well, things happen, you know. But I pray as we go into this holiday season, we celebrate family, the family of God, where God's opened up the door through the, through the birth of Christ and through the resurrection of Christ, that we're in the family. But people that walk with God will be able to speak into your life, and they will see different things in your life. For me, I was, I was doing a little bit of music, and I thought that's what I was going to do. So I just, I'm, I'm, Lord, I'm your guitar guy. I'll just be over here and do my thing. But God inched me out just a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And I started doing street ministry, did a couple, couple years of street ministry, and God was working in that. As a matter of fact, I remember telling my buddy, he said, hey, man, we're doing the street ministry. You ought to come on down there. And I told him, he'd be glad to donate. I'm the guitar guy for God. Not that it was this. It was just like, but that's, that's not in my lane. That's what I thought. Now, this is going back. I thought, I will probably work against you if I go out there is what I'm thinking. I wasn't thinking I was too good for it. I was thinking, I don't know nothing about it. He says, man, you might just be surprised how God will work through your life if you leave that guitar at home. Ooh, got to make a decision. So I said, I'll go. He said, fine. Seven o'clock, right on the number streets, right there in East End. Giving out bad lunches. I said, well, what do we do? He said, give a lunch out and see if somebody needs some prayer. I said, okay. Guy comes up to me. I said, hey, how you doing today? I'm doing all right. Okay. 
I said, you want a lunch? He said, yeah, that's what I want. Boom, snatched the lunch out of my hand. I said, hey, y'all might need to pray for me. <laughs> and I was thinking, this ain't going real good. You know, still got a little buckro in there. I'm still, I'm still getting newly saved. I'm like, man, you're snatching this lunch out of here, buddy. What's up? But you got to love them where they are. So he turns around and takes three steps and turns around and he comes back to me. He goes, man, I lied to you. I go, what just happened up in here? And the man, 42 years old, I know his name to this day. First time, one time I met him, I'll see him in heaven. His name was Curtis Green. And he fell on the ground and he started crying. He just busted out. And he said, man, I don't know what's going on. I'm like, me either. <laughs> and my buddy's going, see, I told you, I told you. He said, I was down about a block away. And I walked by. And he said, Tim, something just drew me over here, man. Just drew me over here to you, talk to you. And this guy, cars going by, on his knees, bawling, asking God to forgive him and gave his life to Christ. See, it wasn't about the gift of the bag. It was about the gift of Christ. What do you think happened to me? Woo, the little fire boy. I don't think I missed but one Saturday in two years because I wanted to go. I got to see God moving. I got to see God using me. How many people like to be used by God? Amen? Are you available? See, even though that wasn't the thing I thought was my deal, God was using that to prepare me for other things. Amen? So sometimes it might be a little bit out of your lane, but if you trust God and, and folks come along the side, you'll know, short order, if it's from God. Amen? So time goes by, and the Lord starts really working on my heart. I mean, I'm sharing Jesus, man, all over the place. I called my buddy, the guy that said, you ought to just play the guitar, and that's what you need to do. He didn't mean nothing by it. I said, man, you ain't going to believe who I met today. He said, where'd you go? I said, man, I did that street ministry with uh, Chris. He said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. Who'd you meet? I said, Jesus. He said, what? I said, man, I was standing there. This dude just fell out on the ground, started crying, and gave his life to the Lord. I'm crying, everybody crying. They're stopping cars. Let me tell you, this is amazing. We would be praying for people, right, and have a big circle. This is 7 o'clock in the morning in the East End. And cars would stop on the road and get out and grab hands with you and pray and get back in the car. Man, that wasn't the most likely place I thought God was going to be stopping cars and everything else. How about you? What would happen, I say this many times, if people were lined up, you get here. We, we usually get here about 8. Wouldn't it be something we got here at, at 6 o'clock and they're still lined up trying to get in? If they had a new iPhone update, they would be. You know, I'm just serious, right? If they had something like that, see how we get out of whack? You know, oh, if it was a concert or if it's the races or the NFL thing, how much more should we be excited about God? Amen. So those things there, the confirmation came from this. As I was moving along, I go, man, I feel like God is calling me to do more ministry. I didn't even know what to do next. I started talking to my, my pastor and different folks and all that. You know what they said? I said, I think I'm supposed to be a preacher. I mean, that's about how I said it too, man. It was like this. Grandmama already knew it early on. I didn't know that. It's her fault. No. <laughs> it's a blessing. But you know what? I, I'm like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. And you know what they told me? This is not a buddy thing. This is a God thing. I'm going to tie it in. I'm just using myself as an example. Confirmation. They said, we were wondering when you were going to realize the call on your life. I was like, well, why don't you all tell me? You know? And then when I, when I received that, I remember different things people had spoken to my life. I remember there was a little old lady the first church I ever went to. She said, honey, I, I, you got a minute? I said, yeah. I thought she was going to tell me to get a haircut or all this. And she grabbed hold of me. She says, honey, I, I don't know exactly what's going on, but I'm going to tell you what. God is going to use you in a big way. I was like, okay. That's scary sometimes. I'm like, what does that mean? To be example? <laughs> He's going to make an example out of me? But even then, so you start connecting the dots. And you look at it. But let me promise you this. When people speak into your life, make sure that they're walking with the Lord. And make sure that it lines up with God's word. Okay? Amen? That's what I want you to hear. So there'll be confirmation from other folks to say, I see God working in your life. I'm going to blow through this here. All right, the desires of your heart start to change. Look at Psalm 37. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Do you know that there is nothing else that I can even think of in my mind that I would rather do than preach the gospel of Jesus Christ? I love playing guitar. 
I love doing a lot of different things. I love riding my motorcycle. I like doing this. I love hanging out with friends. I love eating. But, man, I'm going to tell you, God put that desire in my heart. I didn't wake up, you know, from day one and go, man, I'm just, that's it. Some people get that. It was, it was 30 years later. How many people have run from God a little bit? You can stop. You can stop. He'll take you right where you are. How many people run so far that they think, man, I'm over in the weed so bad that God won't use me? No. How many people like this, listen to this, I don't want to commit my, my life to God uh, totally because he might send me on the other side of the world. Well, let me tell you, when we commit our life to God, and if he does call you to go there, that's gonna, he's going to plant that desire in your heart. You're going to want to go. You're going to want to go. I did not plan on pastoring the church, but I love it. It's a blessing. I get to talk about Jesus all the time. I get to see how God's working in your guy's life. It's amazing. But you know what? God put that in my heart. Because I'll tell you what, I, at, at 17, I was going to be Mr. Rock and Roll. No. I'm just glad they didn't have YouTube back then. That would have really crushed me. Man, they got girls and guys at eight years old playing stuff and everything. You know, you start getting a bigger view. I pray that we get a bigger view of not ourselves, but of God today as we open up the gift of Christ. Amen? Let's keep on rolling. What's that desire that he's put in there? Also, the, the authority of Scripture. If you want to know the will of God, you've got to keep the Word of God open. You hear what I'm saying? We've got to be looking into the Word of God. And I'm telling you what, God will continue to show us amazing things. We talk about this, and I think anybody will say amen to this. You've read a passage today, and you say, oh, that's what that means. And a month later, you read it again, you go, Wow. God's unpacking even more of that. I was looking at this today. I read this off uh, that we started out with Luke 2.10. And the angel said to them, well, first of all, you got an angel talking. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? He said, fear not. Every time God comes on the scene or, or, or some of the angelic hosts come on the scene, it's like, whoa. Things are changing. The whole atmosphere is changing. Look at this. And he says, look, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news. That's good news. Jesus is good news. That's the gospel means good news. Uh, good news of great joy. Is there anything greater than knowing that you have a home in heaven? That means that, that, know, that you know that somebody loves you unconditionally. That he sees the best in your life on your worst day. And how many of you have had a bad day? I've had a bad day. You ever look at me and go, I don't even like that guy. Right? You just, I cannot believe that. But God says, you know what? Come on back to me. And he turns around and he says, look at this. And, and he says, this will be great joy for all the people. But see, the problem is all the people are not open to that. But that doesn't change what our message is. We continue to bring it on. So we got God's promises on that. Now I want you to look at this. Recognition of gifting. Give me a little teaching in this here. And this is what I mean. If God has called you to do something, he will equip you to do it. I tell this story many times. I got some new faces. I'm going to tell you about a little boy that did not do good in school. A little boy that got sick every day before school till he graduated. He hated to read out loud. He hated to be in front of them. Amen. Here he is. How about that? That's just amazing to me. That's a God thing. I was like, oh, gosh. I did a lot of praying then. Lord, please, I don't want to read out loud. Lord, please, I don't want to go to the board and work that, that, that equation. All those things. But listen to what happened in my life. And he does the same in yours. It might be a little different, a little unique, but he'll do that. He took something that I really liked. And when I gave it back to him, the music, he started changing everything. Recognition and gifting. Then when I, when I started doing, let me tell you, I had played music a long, long time. I never did no CDs. Started working for the Lord, we did four. All right? Never been on the radio. Did some, some music for the Lord, we're on the radio. TV commercials, different things like that. I'm going, what is going on? See, what happened was I, I was still on that fence for, for, for the world, and I got to look and find out. I was like, wait a minute. God's got a better deal. How about that? And God has a way of taking what you give back to him and multiplying it, your gifts, your times, your talents, whatever it may be. The thing is, what gift are we giving back to him? What gift are we giving back to him? Are we saying, Lord, you know what? You saved me. You came to this world. He left the very splendors of heaven. And let me tell you, this is pretty right here, but I'm going to tell you what, as you dig in, it wasn't real pretty where Jesus was born. Amen? Walk through that sometime. We do some in-depth Bible studies on that. And I tell you what, regardless of where he was born on this earth, it ain't nothing like heaven. How many are glad that they know that they got a home in heaven when they leave here? 
It would not be possible without the birth of Christ and the resurrection of the Lord. Amen. That's what I want to see here today. But I want us to see where do we fit in? These are the things right here. So I want you to see this. God has equipped you to reach people that no one else can. No one else can. I always, I love street preaching. That does not mean standing on the corner and yelling you're going to hell at people. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you see a need and you go ahead and you just say, hey, man, I'll just, how can I pray for you? What's going on? How, how can you lead somebody to the Lord? How can you, you know, represent Christ in that situation? Because I say this all the time. Ministry is every day, every way, everywhere. I've had some really in-depth Bible studies on the job. How about you guys? Never open the word. Just, just relying on God and the things that we've studied maybe on different nights. And we get to talk about that. How about in the hospital? How about when you're driving your teenager down the road and they ask you something? This popped in my mind. I've asked this before. You want a real, real awakening, awakening of where you are in your life? Ask your children this. Ask people that love you the most this question. What do you think is most important to me? Wow. I asked my boys that years ago. I know where we were at when I asked them. We were passing Kiln Creek, going out of town. So what do you think is important to Pops? <laughs> well, Dad, we know you love jamming. And then they said, but we know you love the Lord. So maybe they didn't understand the question. I didn't, I didn't frame it up any other way. I just wanted them to know. I wanted to know what they see. And a kid will tell you the honest truth, right? Usually, right? If you ask them something like that. And right then I said, That's, I said, you're right. But you know what? When they told me in the order that it was and what they were seeing, I knew I needed to make some course corrections. Because I wanted them to be able to say, not coaxed, not by anything else. Dad, we know the number one thing in your life is Christ. Amen. In some days, we all shine brighter for that. In some days, you think, wow, what's going on? But the good news is, open the gift of forgiveness. Open the gift of grace and apply those things to your life. So today, as we think about the birth of Christ and Jesus coming on the scene in flesh, really that we can know his will. We know that there's one way to heaven. We know that it's through a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that we receive that by faith. It's by grace we're saved through faith, not that of ourselves, but it is a gift to God. I want you to hear that gift to God. If I didn't get any other gift and I got the gift of God, is it enough? Amen. Amen. Think about that. So what gift are you bringing to the table? Well, I bought such and such. This. I don't have a problem with gifts. I'm just trying to get our heart in the right location. Amen. Because I tell you what, have you ever known what, ever seen or realized, I guess is what I want to say, what love does? Love gives. For God so loved the world that he gave. When you get excited, especially when you get older and you love your kids, you just like getting them stuff. You like when they appreciate it, right? You know? You just want to get them stuff. It's like, wow. That's cool. You're not buying their love. You're, you're, you're just like, man, you know what? I would love to bless you with that. When I met Denise, it was amazing, man. It was amazing. Because she would just, this is a second marriage for me, so I got something to talk about, right? First time I'd buy something for my first wife, she'd go, oh, that's nice. That's a nice ring, but they got a bigger one on sale. Ooh. Man, I could get Denise a pair of earrings, man. She would go, oh, 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 look at that, look at that. And I love that, man. She was, I don't know if she had to move that good. But that's a, that's a, that's a that's a little salsa dancing. That's a new knees, baby. Thank you, Lord. But, you know, she, she was so excited about it. And that did my heart good. So, anyway, we dated for a while. And if you like that, I mean, I would get her stuff all the time, man. Just little stuff like that. I just, and, and I like buying stuff for people for no reason. How about that? I'll buy flowers and stuff like that every now and then. And sometimes I'll just buy flowers and say, hey, whew, man, baby, it's been a long day. Oh, I, I've been working too. I said, baby, is there any way you can? Can you get that stuff out of my truck? I can't believe you. I, can, can you go get that? And I'm setting her up the whole time, man. I said, can you, can, can you please just get it? Oh, my back's a little tired there. She come out there and I see that. She goes out there, oh. <laughs> she brings that back on in there. And you know what I tell her? I said, just put them over there, there for your mama. <laughs> oh, I love She said, they are not. I said, I'll just tease them. 
You never know what I'm going to lay out on her. She's so, so now, man, sometimes I say, could you help me get the stuff out of the car? She said, well, okay. It's in the back. It's like an old, uh, you know, old dish or something. Could you bring it in? You got to keep them on the toes, right? But, man, that's something. Uh, because then they go, well, I can't believe I had to go out there. I had to go there. And then you come back in with those flowers. Michael, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you guys. I'm trying to help you guys. Clean your car first. Because she was like, I cannot believe you got that in there. But giving. But, man, I tell you what. So, so when we got married and we got ready to move stuff, my buddy come over there. I don't forget. All right. He's moving stuff. He says, uh. Good old Ray and that guy. He said, man, I don't mind moving the refrigerator and all that stuff. He said, but your old lady's got a bunch of jewelry in here. I don't know how to grab all that stuff. Well, it wasn't expensive, but I had got her one of these. Every, man, every time she'd do a backflip, I'd go, whoo, let me get something else. Let me get something else. Get something else, something else, something else, something else. You know, and stuff like that. And probably put it all together, probably worth about 150 bucks. But it was, the, it, was, it was the gift, you know, behind there, right? You'd probably melt it all down and get a quarter, you know, and something like that. Nothing heavy duty, but because I didn't have nothing. But I just loved the way she loved the gift. I loved what she made over the gift. How about you guys? You know, do you make over the gift of Christ? You think about that. When you're looking at that Christmas tree, you, you, you think about what, what, was that, what are we, as, as Christians, what do we think? This is something I want to do. I haven't done it. I, I'd like to take a cross and decorate it up and put a, put, put a star on that. Have my Christmas tree. You know? Because I'm thinking about as awesome as it is, as we go into this time and think about the birth of Christ, he had 30 years on this earth, a little bit more now, 33 and a half I think it is. And then he really laid it down. He really gave the gift. See, that's just the, the intro. But man, let me tell you, Jesus is coming back. Are you ready? Are you ready? I tell you what, I pray that we receive that gift. So I want to move on here and I want to share a couple little things with you. So many things. I, I did have something else I want to talk about. I, I jumped ahead. A lot of times when we're talking about knowing the will of God and having God move in our life and, and, and share and I, I kind of glossed over it. I want to come back. I want to talk about your testimony for just a minute. You know, the reason I insert myself in the story is not to glorify, but it's to tell you I'm just an everyday guy just like anybody else. And if anything, I tell you that, you say, if God will use my life, he will definitely use your life. Amen? Look through the people in the Bible. Look at David. Look at Moses. Look at all those. Do you think God can use you? I know he can use you. Are you available? So when I was looking through here, and I added the bottom, bottom part of this here, and we talked about God has equipped you to reach people that no one else can. Last week, Dave shared a story. I've had more people ask me about that. It's amazing, right? Different things, all types of stuff. I think about different things. Michael sent me something through the week, talking to Miss Karen. All, I, I, could, I could name every one of your guys' names. I'm just throwing them out here, how things are going. Other day, my doorbell don't work, James. Uh, oh, yeah, that's Merry Christmas. <laughs> I just said that. But somebody had come to my house, and, and I knew it was somebody that was really wonderful because my three-legged uh, uh, alert dog was going, mm, mm. I was like, what is going on? And who was it? Miss Georgia. Bearing gifts, giving hugs. I was like, man, isn't that something? See, e even my dog knew it. She said, she's wonderful. That's good. So, I mean, she took some time to come by and said, I just want to tell you, I was thinking about you. Man, I love that. It's amazing. You will reach people that I never will, and she will reach people that you never will, and he'll reach somebody don't, that, that we don't know. But you know what? One at a time. One at a time. If we got to get them one at a time, that's fine. But if you got 50 people here, that's 50 at a time. I like that. How about that? Well, I'm going to hit this and we're going to roll into something really special. We need to know the truth. And, and I hope that as we look at this, I got a little clip I want to bless you guys with here. And, uh, and it says, John 8, 32, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So often we hear about the truth, but we don't receive it. So often we look around and, and we just say, man, I know that's good for you, but I, I, it's, it's not my time. Let me tell you, you never know when your time is. And I, I, I love this. I was talking to Dave yesterday, and, and he was sharing. He said, man, I love this song. I said, well, you know what? That's good because God is working through you guys. I'm talking all the time, and I'm thinking, man, what a great way to bring this home or what I want to share. Tim, you can pull that up. We'll go ahead and start that. Do you think 
Mary really knew all that God would bring her. Let's take a listen. I'll tell you what, that really sums it up, what I want to get to today. And, and I, I want to hit a few things here because so many times I don't think we realize our identity in Christ. And I want to go over a few things that we have in the gift of Christ. Amen. I'm going to pull these all up and just run through them. Help me out there, Tim, if we can set them all up. As believers in Christ, I hope that, uh, can we do the other side too, Tim? Or is, it, is that it? Yeah, I couldn't get my clicker going. I want you to see this as a gift. I know they're a little small, but I want to get as many on there as I could. I'm going to read them to you. When you open up the gift of Christ and you receive him as Lord and Savior, this is what happens in our life, amen? Our true identity, this is a gift. And this is not an exhausted list, but just a few things. Romans 3.24, we are justified, declared righteous. I want you to hear this. This is the gift that we celebrate, amen? Romans 8.1, no condemnation awaits. Romans 8.2, we are set free from the power of sin that leads to death. 2 Corinthians 5.21, we are made right with God. Galatians 3.28, we are one in Christ with all other believers. That's a great family to celebrate, isn't it? Ephesians 1, 4, we are holy and without fault. If you're here today and you feel overwhelmed, you feel like, you know what, that you're just not worth it, let me tell you what, think about this. You are worth it. And God gave his son to prove that, amen? Look at this here, Ephesians 1, 5 and 6. We are adopted as God's children, Ephesians 1, 7. Our sins are taken away and we are forgiven. The gift of forgiveness is amazing, isn't it? It's good for the person that receives it, but it's also good for the one that gives it, amen? And when I talk about forgiveness, I must always talk about this. When we forgive someone, that does not mean that we agree with the offense. It means that we refuse to allow that to shackle us to the past, amen? Let God free you as we forgive others, amen? Ephesians 1.13, we're identified as belonging to God by his Holy Spirit. You know, God gives you a gift when you ask the Lord to come into your life. The Spirit of God comes in and dwells in us and says we are sealed to the day of redemption until Christ comes back. He says that, that it's his guarantee, it's his promise. That's a great gift, amen, to have God himself in us. Ephesians 2.10, we were God's masterpiece. Ephesians 3.12, we can come boldly and confidently into God's presence. And I want you to hear this last one. This is the gift that we have. Colossians 2.10, we are made complete in Christ. Let us pray. Lord, as we go through this time and we hear the God story, how you leave heaven, Jesus, and come on the scene and you live a sinless life for us, that you give your life as a sacrifice to buy us back out of sin and set us in the family of God. Lord, we look through your word. We want to know the will of God. We need to stay in the Word of God, friends. So if you're listening here today, online, or those that are here today, please open the gift of eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the birth of Christ. He comes on the scene. But you know what? We know the story. We know the history, but do you know his story? Have you received his story into your life? Have you made him your Lord and Savior? The Bible tells us all have, have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That means all of us has blown it. We all have bad days. We do. Why do we sin? Because we're sinners. Amen? But God made a remedy. He laid his life down. He left the splendors of heaven to come to this world. And live a life that was perfect. So that when that sacrifice, when his life was, his blood was poured out. And his life was given for us. And he rose on the third day. He sits in the right hand side of God interceding for me and you. Friend, there is no greater gift. You can have all the coupons. You can have all the fancy stuff. You can have all the latest and greatest things. But I'm going to tell you what. If you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ, you have missed Christmas. And so today, I pray that you open that gift of his love, of his grace, and his mercy. 
and to all the blessings that are found available to a child of God. You say, buddy, how do I do that? We just agree with God. That's what we do. We say, Lord, I agree. I, I have sin in my life and I need you. Lord, we agree that, that he is the Lord. He is the one that takes away sin. He's the son of God. The Bible says that we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. We will be saved. And friends, there will come a time in our life that we draw our last breath here. And it's not a maybe so, hope so, this or that. It can be a no so. You can know. I'm informing you. I don't tell you these things to scare you. I tell you these things to prepare you. Call on the name of Jesus. Right here, right now, God will allow that gift to come to you. Lord, come into my life. Forgive me of my sin, Lord. Today, I know that you are the, the, the one that takes away the sin of the world. You are the son of God, Lord. I believe that you rose on the th third day, Lord. Lord, you're my savior. Come into my life, Lord. Help me to walk this out. And by faith, I receive you. Amen. If that's you today and you prayed that prayer, let somebody know. If you're online, share this. If you're online, you want to know more. You know, we got a full house today. Why should it change next week? You know what? Just think, if everybody brought one person, we'd blow the sides out the building. So that, you know what? I want to encourage you. When you're thinking about gifts you can give, give that of Jesus Christ. Give the gift of inviting to a service. I don't even care if it's here. It's so they can know. We'd be more than glad to have you here. But I can tell you this. It's not about filling the church seats. It's about filling the kingdom of God with the children of God. Amen. Friends, if you're listening today, I pray that you have a very, very Merry Christmas. And if there's any questions about anything that we talked about today, get a hold of me. You know you can through Facebook or through the website. And, and I just say, you know, I hope that everybody takes just a minute to reflect on the greatest gift ever given, Jesus Christ. Amen. Everybody say it. Bye-bye.